Are we ready to chest, uh, te- test our mental toughness? Yes, Paul. Is anyone, anyone in the room worried that he's going to tell you something that's going to maybe should help you, but more like get in your own head? Mm. You know, where it could be like, oh, I didn't know I had that flaw or that fault. I think we're in our own heads, Werder. Uh, Trevor, come on in. Trevor, Trevor's written a book. Look at you, all dressed up, got a you suit and tie what? on. You know, Russ, Russ told me to put a suit and tie on. So no, you look good. I look a little bit. Yeah, but you I look got, out. Of- I got to get everybody. I got to. This is going to be. A, we're going to engage a little bit today. Okay. All right. So I got to get everybody right. something. One of these things. Okay. So Todd, you want to hand out uh, whatever? I got. I got to keep one. I got to start here with you, DP. All right. <sighs> Oh, it takes what it takes, the mindset manual, and it's got our pictures on the cover. Got your pictures? Yeah, why winners win. All right, uh, explain what your job is, Trev. Uh, pull that microphone if you guys can uh, help him. One of the camera people, make sure. Okay, yeah, Perfect, you're yeah. there we go. Uh, explain for the layman what you do. Well, I, I guess the only real consumer-facing brand that people kind of in general would know would be sort of Tony Robbins. And, and, and I would say what I do is probably a lot different than that. But, but my job really starting at IMG, the sports agency, IMG Academy, and then ultimately going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, then Alabama, then Florida State, then a lot of places is to really focus on how to help our, our really good players get better, but, but how to help people get out of their own way psychologically. So I'm not a clinical psychologist. Like if you said, hey, go down and help Antonio Brown right now. I would say I would be, you know, have better luck playing in traffic than helping him. Who is the one, what was the, the biggest challenge you had with an athlete or coach? Well, I'd probably say the, the early challenge I had was the running back, Fred Taylor. Um, Fred Taylor, yeah, when, when Coach Coughlin originally hired me, um, he wanted to play all 16 games. And, um, you know, he, he really didn't know how to unpack that. And, and, and I think what you figure out, and, and I think the book talks about this, Dan, is is how do you learn to do simple better? You know, Joe Madden talked about it all the time. How do you do the basic things well? Fred wanted to play 16 games. We found out uh, two days into it that there were 17 guys on the Jaguars that had, that had played two contracts or were going into three contracts. This is back when they had Keenan McCardell, Mark Burnell, all those guys. And all Fred wanted to do was play 16 games. If you remember his nickname back then, it was Fragile Fred. And that's not a good nickname for a no, running back. Not. And uh, so we found out that of the 17 guys that had played two contracts, there were two common denominators that all of them had. They all showed up at either 6.30 in the morning or earlier, and they all took ice baths at the end of the day. And so we sat down with Fred. We said, all right, if you commit to doing this for the rest of the year, we think this is going to give you your best chance to play all 16 games. He's like, well, what am I going to do at 6.30 in the morning? I said, I have no idea. There must be something these guys do, and I don't like ice baths. We'll, we'll create aqua socks for you. And ultimately, it's amazing, but something simple like that. Fred played 46 games in a row, ultimately retired with you know 11,500 yards and was just short of Jim Brown. And, and it's the basic things. I think, how do you unravel little things like that? But you had Russell Wilson, who's a client, of course, friend of the show. He throws the interception in the Super Bowl. Yes. They're going to win their second. Yep. And then he throws the interception. Yep. How do you unpack that? And build back up. Maybe you don't need to, but yeah. no, you, you you need to. I think what people don't know is the the most televised event in the history of the United States was Mash. You know the Mash finale. Yeah. When in the final two minutes of that game, and Andy Staples, who's a friend of the show, I know who yeah. who, who wrote this, who wrote the book with me, um, 124 million people were watching the final two minutes of the the New England Seattle game, okay. the most televised moment in the history of the United States when Russell throws that interception. Um, so it's a big moment. And what he did was he went back and he watched film and he evaluated it and did what he normally did. But the only thing we controlled, Dan, was the offseason. So we said we got to get out of Seattle because Seattle's having a really difficult time controlling this thing. And we got to go down to San Diego. And the only thing that we control is having the best offseason of your career. Now, what I did was I put together every fourth quarter comeback that he had played, been a part of since high school. So I had over 35 fourth quarter comebacks. And every morning in the offseason, we watched a fourth quarter comeback. So it reminded him of who he was and what he was all about. And then we hired you know, a, a great strength coach and one of the top trainers, had a great offseason, and ultimately he threw 35 touchdowns, seven picks, and had the best season of his career following that year. You've advised Nick Saban? 
Yeah, yeah. I spent eight seasons at the University of Alabama and one season with the Miami Dolphins. Now, do you have to help Saban with confidence, or are you helping his players with confidence? Well, one of the great things about Coach Saban, which I think was different than Coach Coughlin, was he utilized a lot of different people. So there were six different sort of mental experts helping the University of Alabama program. Six. Six different experts. And, and if you think about right now the 132 college football programs, nobody has anybody, and Alabama had six. And, and nobody knows it because it's kind of a unique value proposition. So I was one of many pieces. Yeah. But my job was kind of like that workbook you have in the summer. We would have, uh, when you lift and do seven on seven, every week, twice a week, we would do mental conditioning. And we would just teach our players the fundamentals of thinking. We would study. Is this visualization? Well, we don't really teach the power of positive thinking or meditation. Oh, okay. What we've learned is that negative thinking is the killer. And if you can minimize negativity, then you don't need to be more positive. Can you be overconfident? I think you can be overconfident. I think that would be called grandiosity um, when, when, when you expect, when, maybe when your expectations are ahead of your training. You're um, delusional. You would be, I don't know, delusional would be probably different, but, but you, you expect more than your body's probably capable of the output. Um, the book is called It Takes What It Takes. How'd you yeah. come up with it? It Takes What It Takes. Well, so I was working with the Memphis Grizzlies, and I was having a conversation with Vince Carter. And um, we were sort of talking about three players who had, who had been arrested and that were struggling, and he said, how many of those guys that play college football want to play professional football? And I said, you know, to be honest, at Florida State, Alabama, Georgia, any of these places, it's probably seven out of ten. And he said, you know, isn't it funny that they think they can do whatever they want and still be a professional athlete? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm 38 years old, and there's only a limited amount of things I can do and, 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 and play at 38. You know, I can't dunk as much now because – when I land, I, it takes me longer to get back, and I can't eat fast food after different things, and I have to lift the days of games and all the different things. And I said, well, what do you mean? He sa I said that there are no choices. He said, choice is an illusion. It takes what it takes. And so that there's, okay. a, there's a finite way to be good. To be good at what you do, it takes what it takes. You don't have to do it, but to me, what I've seen, Dan, in 18 years is average people become average through average aptitude or through average behavior, not average aptitude. Like Russell... Russell has a really good aptitude, but his behavior, what he does, when I first met Russ, he comes out to IMG Academy. I meet him with Chris Winkie. Remember Chris Winkie, yeah, the quarterback? Yeah, we go up, we meet him, and I'm like, at first 10 minutes, and you had to be this way. I'm like, is this dude for real? I still say it. Right. I'm like, I mean, he's he's so polished. He's so buttoned up, and he, told, he knew everything about me. He said, I know you worked with Drew Brees 11 years earlier. I want to study everything that Drew did. I want to know, you know all the different mental things. I want to know how he answered every question, being under six feet. <laughs> and, and then he met with me three times a week in addition to, to doing all the things normal combine guys do. It was, it was incredible. It's, uh, the book is called It Takes What It Takes. Trevor Moad is uh, joining us here. Uh, he's a renowned mental conditioning expert and strategic advisor. I, if you were going to do a test on it, is, is test the right word? Yeah, well— so, so there's, there's two things. It'll be an exercise, okay. but there's, there's probably two things. We'll do one, but probably the biggest stress skills we're seeing right now, Dan, is, um, and my goal, Russ said, my goal is I've got I've to do a good enough job to be the official mental conditioning consultant for the Dan Patrick oh, Show. Oh, okay. So, so I, I've obviously got to wow. earn this thing. Wow. So this is, this is, again, now, but our, our premise is you don't need to be sick to get better. So you guys are already really good. So our job is to help you get better. I mean, I think everybody here is pretty strong. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of the things that you would do at the NFL Combine day three if you were getting ready for the draft, if you were one of 300 people invited. Okay. So has everybody got their book? I got my book here. Okay. So now, so we're going to have to ultimately eventually get into where we're, we're, we're going to partner, but I want you to turn to page 14. Page 14. Page 14. Now you're going to have... I'm already nervous. You're going to have this thing called test one. Everybody see test one. It has all the numbers between 1 and 99. Concentration test one. Concentration test one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 30 seconds. When I say go, I'm going to give you a starting number. Now, I know how some of you got through college, so keep your eyes on your own paper. But I'm going to give you – does everybody got it right now? Hold, hold your book up so I can see y'all. Oh, boy. Okay? So you have to have a pen in your hand. Okay? And when I say go, I'm going to give you a starting number. That number might be 77. You got to find 77. You got to put an X through 77. 
and you got to find as many numbers in consecutive descending order. Okay, you're going to have 30 descending. descending order. So anybody go to Florida State? Okay, I don't want to challenge you if I say descending. I know you might get a little bit nervous if I say any Florida State Seminoles here. But 77, the next number in consecutive order would be what? 76. 76, okay? So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to move out of my desk and, and engage a little bit. I'm going to watch you guys. Uh-oh. But, but, but you know what? Let me take a break here. Take a break? Yeah. Let's take a break. We'll get ready. We'll get everybody when mentally he, ready. Yeah. Can you end a break? It's going to take us at least. How, how long will it take? It's going to take to do all three. It's going to take us probably about two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. Let's go. Let's do it now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when I say go, I'm going to give you a starting number, and you got to find as many numbers in consecutive descending order, okay? Yeah. So test one, we're starting right now. We're going to start with the number 99 and go. Does my live mic work? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. So I'm going to tell you 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds. So 25 seconds remaining. Good God. There is a 97, Dan. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to find the damn thing. Uh, 15 seconds remaining. I'm going to need you. Are you sure there's a 97 on here? Yes. Five seconds remaining. And stop. Okay, you come up here. I need, I need right now, I need everybody to get a partner, turn to test two. Get a partner, turn to test two. Come on up here. Come on up here, brother. You're going to partner with Dan. All right, so I want to wait to front row and back so row. You're gonna, yep, so just, just slide over right next to him. You're going to go over here and partner with Dan. All right. Okay, you're going to look at Dan. So when I say go this time, all you're going to do is lean over your partner's shoulder. One of you is going to watch him on test two. So you're going to watch him, and then you're going to switch, and then you're going to count for the other guys. So put your hand if you're going to watch your partner first. Okay? This is the exact thing you would do at the NFL Combine day three. Okay? So when I say go, I'm going to give you a new starting number. Yep. You're going to lean over, and you're going to watch your partner, and then we're going to switch. But I'm not okay? Help. So next, next thing, we're going to start with the number 68 and go. We're going descending. D consecutive descending order. All right. Is he supposed to be helping me out? Nope, you're just watching him. Oh, okay. Uh, I had it. 20 seconds remaining. <laughs> 10 seconds. Very good, and stop. Switch partners. Okay. Here you go, brother. You're gonna watch DP right here. You got mine. That's terrible. That's funny, DP's dude. gonna watch you. <laughs> okay, next partner up. I'm exact terrible. same exercise. We're starting with the number 51 and go. And 51. Yep. Let's roll. 51. Is this test three? Test two. Test two. <laughs> You're on test two. You're not to test three yet. We're almost to test three. 51. 51. Lean over his shoulder and count for him. 51. 51. 51. <laughs> terrible. 15 seconds remaining. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a reason why this is confusing. Consecutive descending order. There is a 48. Five seconds. Very good, and Jeez. stop. Jeez. Now, this time, we're going to do something we call trash talking. Your job is to do everything you can to distract your partner from finding the number. You cannot physically touch them. We're in the hashtag, with the hashtag world. But my job is to do everything I can. We get to test three to distract you. So I can yell. I can make as much noise as I want. First of all, make sure you write your score down on each of the top two. So how many you crossed out on the top two? So write down your score. So, Dan, write down your score. Yep. So now your partner, your, what's your partner's name? Grayson. Grayson. So you're going to do everything you can. I'm going to help you to distract Dan from finding the number. Okay? So that means you can, you can yell. You can get this in his so face. You can do whatever you can. Uh-oh. And we're gonna, this is all connected to the power of concentration, which is the most stressed skill in 2020. So put your hand up if you're going to talk the trash first. 
Great. Well, you talk at the yeah. trash first. <laughs> okay. Okay, this time, test three, starting with the number 41 and go! West Virginia 44. University. 40, Where are you at, DP? 41? Was it 41? Or 41 is the number. 41 is the number. Don't think of 38. Come on, Grayson. you got to get the, as loud as Don't you can. Do everything you can to distract right, them. Dartmouth isn't really Ivy League. Yeah, 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 yeah,
So, it, like, look, I can say, too, I'll be Patty Special Sauce, has cheeseburger, sun on SBC bun. Like, McDonald's advertised great commercials to me, and I want to have a Big Mac. But outside advertising versus inside advertising, right. like Russell's ad campaign, the guy, he's convinced himself he's a machine. Right. right? So as soon as you're controlling the narrative, 31, 32, 33, 34, yeah. also looking to see if there's a pattern. Yes. Right? A little bit left I was right. looking for the pattern before the whole thing started. I was like, all right, is there any type of... That's like, it. But, but you ask how, how Dan does it, or, or in a Super Bowl, or in a big moment when he's brought... Or, or Maria Menounos, and, you know, at yeah. the, the... Whatever the situation is, you can only sustain one thought at a time. A great athlete is thinking about those sub-components. So Russ, when he walked out in that final thing, was... All right, I got to get the call from Daryl Bevel. Right. Then once I get the call, I got to engage Jermaine Curse. I got to engage. Now, as soon as his mind goes to the scoreboard sure. and thinking about that moment, he's dead. Right. And that's the difference, I think, between a Garoppolo and a Russell. You could see late in the game, the moment gets really big and Garoppolo starts engaging all these other things, mm. in my opinion, whereas Russ is always focusing right. on the one thing Ooh. that is the right thing. I, I would see all of the numbers except for the number that I needed to see. Except for the last time. The last time I was better. It, it, it felt, in, because you well, felt because, more. Yeah, because the fact that he was yelling, it just felt like I was more zeroed in, where it, it was like, I have to be more, because right. I float, you know, I don't, I, I, my attention span is really limited. So when he started yelling at me, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, not hearing a word you're saying, dude. Was it Keep cheap? yelling. Right, but that's where if, if you start saying basically 45, 40, like if you're telling your... For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.